So, in this video I want to discuss the important technique of integration by parts. And I've written down the key formula here. And what I'm going to do in the video is to show how this formula follows from the product rule of differentiation. Integration techniques generally follow from rules of differentiation. Then, in this formula here, we have a product, u and v prime, and we need to choose in our integrand what u and v prime are going to be and I'm going to describe a way of doing this that works very often and this is based on the word late, again I'll describe what that means later and I'm going to provide an example. So with that let's move on to the next slide and see how this formula arises from the product rule. So what I want to do now is to consider a product of two functions u and v and I want to differentiate the product so I want to differentiate so I'll write it out explicitly d by dx the product u of x times v of x and to do this close brackets I'm going to use the product rule. And I'm going to be not very explicit about the x-dependence, but please do remember that u and v are both functions of our variable. So therefore, we have the, the derivative of u times v, both functions, is going to be u prime the derivative times v plus u times the derivative of v, which I'm writing as v prime. I now rearrange this formula, and that tells me that u v prime is equal to derivative of u times v minus u prime v. So all I've done is just rearrange this equation to get this. But now what I do is I integrate both sides. And doing that, I obtain that the integral of u v prime with respect to our variable is the integral of the derivative of u v integrated with respect to our variable minus the integral of u prime v integrated with respect to x. At this stage, we look at this term here. And we think that the derivative of a function, when you integrate it, is just going to give you back the function. So what we are going to have is uv minus the integral of u prime v with respect to x. So the integral of u times v prime with respect to x is going to be u times v minus this integral here. And that is the integration by parts formula. So this is actually quite an easy formula to derive. In case you're wondering at all about this step here, what you should think perhaps is the following. So note, if we have the integral of the derivative of a function, in this case uv, integrated with respect to x, this is going to be some function, an antiderivative when you integrate, of x, where our antiderivative obeys that the derivative of it is going to be the integrand, which in this case is d by dx of u v. So looking at this, we identify f with u v. So the integral of a derivative of some function is going to be the function. So 
that's our proof of the product rule and what I want to do now is to talk a little bit about how one might choose u and v prime. To do that we'll go on to another slide. So what I want to do now is to calculate a simple example of integration by parts and I want to lay emphasis doing it on the choice of u and v prime. So the integral that I want to calculate is the integral of x times e to the x integrated with respect to x. And to do this we're going to be using integration by parts. So we're going to be using that the integral of u v prime with respect to x is u v minus the integral of u prime v with respect to x. So let's now look at this formula that we want to use to evaluate this integral and think about it. So first of all let's look at the integral. We don't immediately recognize that this is an integral we can do. We do recognize that the integrand has the form of a product, two terms multiplying each other. There's not a very simple relation between them, so we don't immediately think, yes, we could perhaps try a substitution. So instead we think, let's use integration by parts and see if that works. In the integration by parts formula, in the initial integral, the integrand is composed of a product, and the two terms in it, u and v prime, are treated very differently. The integration by parts formula tells us that we have to differentiate u, so that's differentiated here, and it tells us that we have to integrate v prime, that's been integrated here and here. So when we make our choice here, and we say well, I'm going to call this bit either u or v prime, and then this bit the other one, so v prime or u, one of them is going to be integrated and one of them is going to be differentiated. Now, if we were to take x and integrate it, we would have x squared over 2. So that's likely to make this integral here worse than the initial integral. So instead of that, we're going to choose the other way around. So let's choose u is x and that means u prime which we are going to need is the derivative of x with respect to x and that's easy it's just 1. Similarly v prime is e to the x and v which is its integral which we're also going to need is just e to the x. So therefore from integration by parts with this choice we have that the integral of x e to the x with respect to x is going to be so it's uv u is x, v is e to the x, so it's x e to the x minus, because of that minus sign here, the integral of u prime times v, u prime is 1, v is e to the x, so 1 times e to the x is e to the x, and we see now that integration by parts is indeed going to let us calculate this integral because this is a standard integral whose result we should know. So what we have is x e to the x minus and the integral of e to the x is just e to the x. And now I can add an integration constant. So x e to the x integrated with respect to x is just x times e to the x minus e to the x. And we can check that our work is correct for such an indefinite integral quite easily. What we do is we take our result, we differentiate it, and we see that we regain the original integrand. So we want to differentiate 
x times e to the x minus e to the x. I'm not going to write the integration constant because its derivative is 0. And we use the product rule here. So when we differentiate the x, we'll get 1 times e to the x. That's e to the x plus x times the derivative of e to the x, which is e to the x, minus, because of this, and the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. And we recognize that the e to the x here and the e to the x here cancel, because they are accompanied by a plus sign and a minus sign, and we are left with the original integrand, so which is the original integrand and if we've regained the original integrand that shows us that we've calculated the integral correctly. Now I would also like to encourage you to try u is e to the x and v prime is x. In other words, in this integral, not to make the choice that we've made here, but to make the other possible choice. And what you will see if you do this is that this won't work. But it's instructive to do it and to see that it really doesn't work. It makes the integral harder rather than giving us a nice easy integral that we could do here. So, we've seen that an appropriate choice of u and v prime can sometimes make integrals possible through the integration by parts formula. I have stated, and I've left this for you as an exercise, that making the opposite choice won't work. And what I want to do on the final slide of this video is just to describe a general way of choosing u and v prime that often works. So the technique or the rule for choosing u and v prime is based upon remembering the word late. So let's imagine that we have an integral of two functions f of x and g of x is our product and we want to use integration by parts to calculate this. So we want to choose one of our factors to be u and one of them to be v prime. The idea is we choose u to be the function which occurs first in the word late. So what I mean by this is the following. Late stands for the following logarithms, algebra, trig, trigonometry, and exponentials. So let's look at an example explicitly. The example we had a moment ago was x times e to the x with respect to x. We look at our integrand, we see we have a product. This part here is algebra. So it's A. This term here is an exponential. So it's E. And since A is before E in late, We choose u 
to be the function which occurs first, algebra in this case, we choose u to be equal to x, and therefore v prime is the other factor, and it is e to the x. So that's the technique. We look at an integral. We think we want to use integration by parts, and we look at the factors, and we see if one factor occurs earlier in the word late, so a logarithm, say, multiplied by an algebraic function, we would choose the logarithm to be u, and the algebraic function to be v prime. So let me just pause and make some room, and let me write out a couple of examples. So let's consider the integral of sine x multiplied by, let's say, e to the x with respect to x, and let's consider the integral of x multiplied by the logarithm of x. So I'm not going to calculate these integrals here. I just want to decide how we would choose u and v prime. So in both cases our integrand is a product of two clear terms here and here. What we would do is we would choose in the first example this is trigonometry, this is an exponential, t comes before e in the word late, so here we would choose u is sine of x and v prime is e to the x and in our second example we would choose x here is algebra and that's the second letter in late but the log of x is a log and it's the first letter in late so we would choose u to be log x and we would choose v prime to be x. So that is the rule late. It's very often helpful for letting us know which way to choose u and v prime. And as I say, I'm not going to calculate these in this video. This example here is fairly easy. This example here requires repeated use of integration by parts, but I'm going to stop this video here.